So there's a lot of people that uh, their first time up here fishing. How many people have trolled before? How many people have trolled on Canadian Shield? The biggest thing you're going to see up here is you've got a lot more rocks and it down south. Um, depending on the time of year, not right now necessarily. You know, what we've been hearing, it's mainly been uh, fish more orientated towards weeds. You start getting the water temperature cooler, they can start uh, stacking up on the rocks more. Your whitefish, your tulipies, ciscos, all that stuff will move, will move up onto the rocks. <laughs> One of the most consistent times of the year to troll, not only catch a long fish, but catch a really heavy fish. So, what you want is a rod that's got a soft tip. First of all, that's going to show you your bait action. You're going to know if you got weeds on. You know, the minute that thing stops vibrating, crank it into your weeds off. But the biggest thing is when the fish hits, something's got to give. You know, there's guys that troll mono. I'm a braid guy. When I'm trolling, I, I like braid. I like to bury those hooks, without a doubt. <laughs> um, so I need the rod to give. And this is one of our Thorn Brothers customs. Um, this rod is 16, 17, 18 years old. Still going. Um, nice soft tip, but the biggest thing is when that fish hits, as you start gradually loading it, you can see how it builds into the backbone. This is the shock absorber. So, um, pretty much most of the lakes in Minnesota, you can get away with like a 36 inch leader. 130 pound to 200 pound fluorocarbon is going to work real well. When you're really bashing baits into rocks, uh, you want to run a longer leader. This is a five foot uh, to 60 inch leader. The biggest reason, here's my rock. You know, say your bait's running down here on the floor. You come over this rock with your boat. Well, if you've got a short leader, your line's going to fray on that rock first. With the longer leader, the leader slides over the rock, then the bait walks over the rock. Uh, doing the big, you know, bashing baits into the heavy, heavy cover. This is 200. Pounds. Doesn't affect the action of all these big baits. The other nice thing with the, the uh, diameter of this, notoriously, a fish will come up, eat the bait, and Lake of the Woods is really bad for this. They'll come up, eat the bait, and the first thing they do is they roll up into your leader. The old days when we're using. Uh, we used a lot of 105 to 120 pounds stainless steel and single strand wire. There were so many fish we'd get on both sides, like, we can't take a picture of that because it just literally almost sliced them in half. Mm -hmm. So with this with bigger diameter material, it barely puts a mark on the fish. The fish release is nice, no damage for them, and you get a nice, you know, nice pretty picture. So, uh, as far as line, for years, I've used uh, Western Filaments Tough Line Plus. It's pure white, soft, no coloring on it. Use that in 100 pound. This is the last year they're making it. Next year, it'll be, it'll be gone. <clears throat> uh, what I've switched over to, this is called a Master Braid, an 80 pound. They kind of overbuild the line. It's actually, it's a 100 pound type diameter. It's identical to that 100 pound Tough Line Plus. So. Uh, but you want something that's going to be strong, a little more bulky, for the simple fact of it's something that's not going to be real fragile when you're, if you do get some abrasion on it. Whether it's because of the rocks, or the other thing is just the abuse that the release has put on some of your lines. Uh, reels, line counter reels. I've used everyone you can imagine. I've worked at Thorn Brothers over 20 years. <laughs> I've played with everything. Um, Shimano Dakotas are the only ones that have held up. I've, <laughs> the biggest problem I've had with Okumas uh, and Daiwas is you cannot trust the reading on this. Most of the time you'll be letting them out and it's like, okay, you know, 10 feet, 20 feet, it's 20 feet, 20 feet, and it just sticks. So this has been real consistent every single time. And the other nice thing with this is the first time I ever took it out, um, I think I had a grandma on. Sit here bouncing along and start smacking bottom with it. And with any other reel I've had, when you bury a bait in the rocks, especially the dive ones, you swear you got a fish. Because the drag isn't smooth. You're going along else and you hear rip, rip, rip. Well, that's the drag sticking. You look back, you got a fish? No, it's not a fish. 
first time I used this, I hooked up on a rock. I watched the rod bend over, and the rod, the reel just went click, 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 click. So, yeah, and this, this rod is at least 17 years old. This reel is one of the original ones they came out with, which was almost 10 years ago now. So that's the nice thing. Invest in good stuff. It's going to last you. You know, casting is a lot more abusive. Um, graphite's a little more fragile. Where we got a good comp composite uh, fiberglass graphite mix on the rod and a good reel, they're going to last you forever. There is no perfect musky plane board. Um, offshore, the church boards. This is one of the new church TX44s, which is their bigger size. They're all nice except for the releases. Every single one you got to change. General rule of thumb, uh, like grandmas, the popular baits, grandmas, 10 inch, you know, grandmas, jigs, and slammers, anything in that 9 to 10 inch range, 40 feet of line back, 80 pound line, these baits, the slammers going to be the shallowest, you're going to get about 6, 7 feet, but in general you're looking at about 6 to 11 feet. So that's kind of a good starting point with, with any of these baits. Um, but minnow baits, in the fall, this is pretty much the number one producer, some kind of minnow bait. Um, as far as crankbaits, there's, I really look at three classes. Your minnow baits, these are baits that are real thin, flat-sided. When they're coming through the water, they tend to have a lot of roll, so you get a lot of flash off the flat sides. From that, I'm going to go to some type of shad body. Um, in general, most of the shad body baits are, you don't get hardly any roll, they're really, really tight action. So when you look at your rod tip, it's, these are the baits on your rod tip that are, do the real fast vibrating. So it's a different vibration pattern. In the last couple of years, we've got these baits called headlocks. And this doesn't fit the mold of anything. <laughs> in, in general, Headlocks are always a tight action. The bait is always kind of wobbling like this. <coughs> but you can see there's three eyes, three settings here. On the shallowest setting, um, this thing does crazy things. You'll be sitting there watching it in the water, and it's always doing this, but then it's like this. But if you've, if you've uh, walleye fished or bass fished, if you use scatter wrap, that's kind of what a scatter wrap does, where it's just kind of does the wander. Biggest thing with this, it's not consistent. It's going to do this, going to go left, right, left, left, right, you know, left, right. It's going to be all over the place. No rhyme, no reason. <laughs> um, so yeah, tons and tons of built-in trigger. So, um, the headlock, this is kind of what's really available now. Um, Where's Matt? Seifert? There you are. <clears throat> There's a one that's about two and a half times fatter. Same body shape and a little bit, kind of not so much longer lip, but wider lip. And that's called the Matlock after him. <laughs> we were going to call it the Fatlock. Because it is, it's a fatter headlock. <laughs> but he likes Andy Griffith so much we had to call it the Matlock. Show this one because this one's brand new. This is a new 12 inch slammer. Kept it real simple. I think he's only got six colors. But the nice thing with this, I mean, you've got 13 inch grandmas, 14 inch jakes, um, a lot of other big metal baits. They're good trollers. They don't cast. When you go to cast a 13 or 14 inch, you know, bigger metal bait, they tend to go end over end, tangle up in your leader, and you backlash. <laughs> so, and then. Lips break on them too. Um, this, you can see it's a real thick, heavy lip, real heavily built. It's a solid plastic bait. Um, but at 12 inches, it's a real easy caster too. So you've got to be casting and trolling. The other bait we troll a lot in the fall are the real big rubber baits. Um, you know, the Monster Medusas, the Pounder Bulldogs, even the Two Pounder Bulldogs. Uh, the nice thing with, throw, with using rubber when you're trolling, you got three people in the boat, put out two blader boards, put a rubber down the middle. <laughs> that way, no matter how cold or nasty it is, you're still staying busy. 
you still you still stay warm. <laughs> you get you get tired of it, you get sick of it. Next guy's turn. around the bottom. And Make then, sure it don't go all the way back into the hook. Yeah, and then all you have to do is snap that shut. Okay. And then your line behind that pin. Yeah, and it's good to go. With the, uh, the inline boards. to try to lift up it's not going to come yeah. especially with the fish pulling so grab the front grab the back kind of release the pressure you know by tilting it forward you know, open real easy okay. wow that's nice otherwise when they're locked up you can pull all you want and it's you're not coming in, out this is a locking mechanism and they'll keep open so just pull a pin okay. put straight out Now this I gotta see. Frable's got the one that's on a pole. And that works good too. This would be tricky in the wind. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Now he's going to have the whole tree. No. Get it? Look at that. Whatever is it. a good grab of it. Yeah, you bent it up. Oh, that looks nice. That's not yeah. wrong with it. Basically, you got a pipe. With filled lead with lead, it, yeah. and you just drilled these hooks right into it. That would be simple to make. It's like anything with musky fishing, you gotta build confidence in things. If you wanna catch fish, this is the book you need. <laughs> right here, in a lake. What do you wanna know when the fish are biting? <laughs> and they sell There's these like where? Seven bucks. You sell these Smart brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> All I was telling you is you should, probably shouldn't take a break now. You should probably be fishing. Yep. And if you've located a big fish, you should probably get back on that spot. You know, very good. Yeah. And how, how, how much is new moon and, you know, when you have full moon? Full moon, new moon. You know, are they actually a, even a higher peak yet at those points? or? Yes and no, especially when it comes to the larger fish.